The V2 is often considered a Nazi rocket, but is that, strictly speaking, true? We're looking at that question today on Vintage Space. So let me be clear right up front, this is not calling into question whether or not the V2 was a weapon. It was, of course, a weapon that Germany launched on Allied cities in the closing months of the Second World War. But it wasn't, strictly speaking, a Nazi weapon. It was designed and built by the German army, and then the Nazi party strong-armed control over the weapon towards the end of the war. The V2 has its roots in the Verein für Raumschiffelt, or BFR. This amateur rocket society was exploring liquid-fueled rockets when it caught the attention of the German army. And among the men who visited visited the VFL site to see what they were up to was Walter Dornberger, and he was particularly impressed with a young Werner von Braun. Fast forward a little bit to October 1st of 1932, and Walter Dornberger hired Werner von Braun to start developing liquid-fueled rockets for the German army. The army group under Dornberger developed the aggregate series of rockets. This is the A1, the A2, the A3, then the A5, and then the A4. The A4, of course, being the rocket that eventually was renamed the V2. The A-series rockets developed over the course of the 1930s and early 1940s without much support from Hitler or the Nazi party. But the SS was very interested in the potential of this rocket. So much so that Heinrich Himmler, the leader of the SS, tried to recruit Werner von Braun himself, just to have a direct link into the program. Von Braun ultimately accepted Himmler's offer, knowing that if he didn't, he would likely perish in a work camp. But still, the Nazi party was not firmly behind the rocket program, at least not until August of 1943. Shortly after midnight on August 18th, the Allies bombed Penemunde, the northern German site where the A-4 team was developing their rocket. A navigational error meant that key German personnel and documents were spared the attack, but it was enough to spook Hitler. He ordered all rocket development moved to central Germany into caves within the Harz Mountains. At the same time, Hitler appointed Himmler as his new Minister of the Interior, making him the leader of the effort to move the A4 production underground. This gave the SS stronger control into the rocket program. A briefing from Dornberger and von Braun sealed the rocket program's fate. Hitler was finally behind the idea of using rockets as an offensive weapon and gave the program full priority. This was what Dornberger had always wanted and what he knew he needed to really develop the A4 into a viable weapon. Two months after the Allies' invasion at Normandy on June 6, 1944, Hitler promoted Himmler to head of the Home Army. Because Dornberger's group reported to the Home Army, he now reported to Himmler. Himmler, in turn, appointed Hans Kamm as special commissioner for the A4 program. This was a level of authority that Dornberger had never had. Kamler was now the one with authority to launch an A4 in battle. Dornberger later wrote in his memoirs that having control of the A4 program wrestled from his hands was as though he were a musician who spent a lifetime lovingly crafting a violin and then watched as some unmusical brute scraped its strings with a block of wood. So is the A4 slash V2 a Nazi weapon? Well, on the one hand, no. It was developed by the German army for Germany to be used as an offensive weapon, so yes, it was always a weapon. But on the other hand, yes, because it was the Nazi party who ultimately seized control of the program and launched the rockets against allied cities. This, I should say, is the absolute Coles Notes version of the story. I get into the full story of how the Nazi party wrested control of the A4 program from Dornberger and the German army in my new book, Breaking the Chains of Gravity which is out now in the UK and coming out in the US on January 12th. I'm also selling signed copies on my website, Harbacks Only, if you want to order one potentially in time for Christmas. Hopefully I will get them from my publisher and be able to send them out in time for the holidays for you guys. So those links are below if you are interested in ordering it. So does that answer questions about what the V2 was, sort of? Because it is a really interesting rocket that played a very interesting role and it can be looked at so many different ways. And again, Cole's Notes version. There's so much more to say about this. Leave any questions, further comments you have in the comment section below, and of course ideas and topics you'd like to see discussed on future episodes. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as AST Vintage Space for Vintage Space content every day of the week. And with a new video every week, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode.